Okay, so today I'm going to be doing a question from the 2002 AP Calculus test, and it's question number three. And this question says, a particle moves along the x-axis so that its velocity, at, its velocity v at any time t for the time falling between 0 and 16 is given by 3 of t equals e to the 2 sine t minus 1. At time t, the particle is at the origin. So part a asks us to um, sketch a graph of v of t on the graph provided, or on the axis provided for 0 through 16, the time 0 through 16. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our calculator under y1, which I already did, and then set your window so that the minimum x value is 0 and the maximum is 16, as it says in the problem, and then press graph, which I already had done, and it shows you the graph, and so now we can just sketch the graph that's given on our calculator. So that's pretty easy. So it's kind of rough, but essentially that's what you're going to be doing. Just sketch the graph that's given on your calculator. So now we can move on to part B. And in part B, it says, during what time intervals, or what intervals of time is a particle moving to the left? Give a reason for your answer. We know that when V of t is less than zero, then the particle is moving to the left. So we can go ahead and look at the graph that we actually just used and see where it is negative. So you can see from here to here it's negative and from there to there it's negative and then there's a tiny bit right there that it's negative. So we're going to want to find the point, the um, critical numbers using the calculation function on your calculator and then we can easily just say from that point to that point the velocity is negative, from this point to this point it's negative, and from there to 16 it's negative but we first need to find what those values are. So in order to find the actual values of these, we can go ahead and use the calculation function on your calculator to find the zeros. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll find the first zero. And the first zero is pi. We'll go ahead and find the second zero, and this will give us our first interval of time for which um, the velocity is negative. So calculation, zero. And it gives us 2 pi. So now we know from pi to 2 pi that the velocity is zero. That's our first section. So now we'll go to find our section, second section of velocities of equaling zero by doing the same thing. And this, the first point is from 3 pi, and now we need to find the second one. and 4 pi. And now we just need to find the last value at which it intersects the x-axis. And that is 5 pi. And it's from 5 pi to 16 because 16 is the time interval given, and that's where the graph ends. So. so this is our answer. We'll put the velocity negative in the given time intervals.
and this is our final answer. So you just need to look at the graph and then find the actual values using the calculation function of the zero and you will find that these are the given values. So now let's go on to part. Okay, so for part C, it asks us to find the total distance traveled by the particle from time t equals zero to time t equals four. And we know since it's asking for total distance traveled, we can just take the integral of velocity from zero to four, but we need to take the absolute value of the velocity function. And we can easily just put this into our calculator and it's really easy since we already have y1 as v of t. So we'll do math 9 to 4. And we'll put the absolute value in here, which is under press math and then go to number and it's the first one. And we'll put in y1 since we already have it entered into our calculator. X and that will give us the value once it finally loads. It will give us the total distance traveled. So you just need to make sure you take the absolute value of the velocity function in order to find the total distance. And this is going to be 10.5425. And it is measured in, it actually doesn't tell us, so we can't label it. So this is our answer for part C. Asks if there's any time for any time t between 0 and 16 at which the particle returns to origin and we need to justify our answer. So in order to do this, we're going to have to put, we're going to want to graph in our calculator the integral from 0 to 16 of the velocity function to ensure that there is no time at which that equals zero. So this we're going to graph it and we can go ahead put that in our calculator. And wait for it to graph. And we can see that there is no time at which the velocity between 0 and 16, or the integral of the velocity between 0 and 16 is less than t, or is less than 0, less than or equal to 0. So we know that there is no time at which it will return to the origin.